So I follow a lot of different Blender forums, Facebook pages, and subreddits, and there are groups of questions I see asked frequently, such as, what YouTube channel should I watch to learn Blender? How long did it take you to learn Blender? Are there any books on Blender? Can someone teach me Blender? And so forth. These are all questions that anyone using Blender has asked or at least thought about at one time or another, and they can really be summarized into one simple question. How do I learn Blender? Furthermore, how do I make the leap from relying on tutorials to actually understanding the software and making my own projects? As someone who has had these same questions at one point, I empathize with the people who are in the moment of trying to make that leap, and so today I want to address this question from my own point of view. So everyone's journey in this field is going to be different to some extent, and everybody learns differently, but I want to start off by telling you about my journey and how I learned. So years and years ago, I became interested in game design. I started looking into just about anything that had to do with that topic. It wasn't long until I realized that assets were made outside of the game engines with software such as Max and Maya, but I didn't have money for those softwares. I went out on a limb and searched if there were any free alternatives thinking I would definitely not find anything, and to my surprise, I found Blender. The very first thing I remember doing is following along with the cloth simulation tutorial by tutor for You. I got through it pretty fast and it was pretty cool, but at the end of the project, I didn't really feel fulfilled and I didn't really want to even share my render. I mean, after all, it wasn't mine. It was tutor for use and I just copied him. I remember wanting to be able to create awesome things on my own and be able to share them and feel good about them, but feeling completely lost and intimidated by the software. This will take forever to learn, I thought, and Blender kind of got put on the back burner for me. Over the years, I would revisit it from time to time and follow a tutorial that would help me achieve a specific task. But in my mind, I was in no way competent enough to go into the software and create whatever I wanted at will. However, one day, I just kind of did. It's kind of foggy trying to think of the exact moment that I decided to try and make something of my own, but I just know that one day I decided to make a backyard scene in Blender. So I got in Blender and suddenly it just felt like I could make things. I began using the simple tools I had used many times in other tutorials like extruding, loop cuts, bevels, I used a grass tutorial from somewhere on YouTube, and obviously I wasn't a pro and I did have to look things up and use tutorials for certain aspects, but at the end of a week I had successfully made what I set out to make without following a step-by-step -step tutorial on making it, and it felt great. Unfortunately, the hard drive that render was on died on me, and so I don't have it anymore. Which is lame, because that project was very special to me. Believe me when I tell you, the first project you complete on your own will be worth more to you than any step-by-step -step project you ever complete. Now, that's not to say that these tutorials are bad, not by any stretch am I saying that. They have a purpose, and I'll talk about them more in a minute. But the point is, is your own project is just going to feel better, and it's going to be yours. And after pondering why I was able to make that jump when I just started my own project, I realized it's because I had a goal. Not just any goal either, but what's called a SMART goal, which is a goal that is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. That simple thing is what I think a lot of people who are trying to make that jump need to be able to make their own projects. You need a goal, and you just need to get started. I think something that scares people from even getting started on a project of their own is the workflow and the question of where do you even begin. And my advice to you is this. First, if you have absolutely zero experience in Blender at all, then absolutely do a step-by-step -step tutorial. Get your hands dirty. As I said, there's nothing wrong with doing them, and they do provide a good amount of knowledge. Like I said, if you're brand new, they will allow you to get your feet wet and get your hands on a lot of the basic tools that are used in Blender. And even for people who are intermediate, they can show different workflows and different ways of achieving uh, things that you may not have known before. So again, they're not bad by any means. It's just when you follow one step-by-step, -step, it can be hard to retain a lot of that information because you're a lot you're really focused on trying to make sure you do everything exactly as the person teaching the tutorial did and not missing something more so than why are you doing it so once you haven't seen some extent of the workflow in blender set a goal don't make it something outlandish make something that you think can be done in a week max maybe a table or something but model it after a specific table without googling how to make a table in Blender, or at least start without doing that. Instead, get as far as you can with what you know and Google things specific to the problems you are having as you go along. For example, if you can't remember how to add a loop cut, look it up. If the mirror modifier isn't working right, Google it. If your searches are yielding no results to your specific problem, at that point you can ask in a forum. 
I like to think of forums as the fallback when all else fails. It's nice to know that when everything else fails, someone will likely be on the internet who can help. However, be aware if your issue is something extremely simple that can be Googled, like the aforementioned how do I add a loop cut, I would not use a forum for that. I've seen people tend to get annoyed when someone can't be bothered to Google something that would obviously answer their question. You have to be a problem solver in this field, and trust me, there are going to be problems for you to solve in the first project and pretty much every project after that. So let's get more specific into what you should be doing. I'm going to roll with a table example, but it doesn't have to be a table, so long as it's not something that's overly complex and, like I said, a smart goal. Search for a reference of the table that you like and simply begin trying to make the correct shape. The table is pretty square, so maybe we'll start with a cube. Use the basic modeling tools like loop cuts, extrusion, beveling, subdivisions, the mirror modifier, all the things that you'll find in any starter step-by-step -step tutorial. Like I said, it's okay to Google these things and use YouTube uh, as you encounter problems and need help making them work right. But the more you use these tools on your own and the more you debug your own problems, the easier it will be for you to remember how to use them. Once you're happy with the shape of your object, move on to unwrapping. Figure out how to add a grid to your object and try to get UVs as clean as you can. I wouldn't stress too heavily on this for your first project, but just do the best you can. From there, come up with a strategy for acquiring and applying materials. Maybe you'll decide to shoot your own textures, in which case CG Geek has a tutorial about this that I'll link. Maybe you'll use free polygon textures. Maybe Texture Haven has something you like. However, I will say for your very first project of your own, I wouldn't go as far as to spend money. Try to get this done for free. In the future, if you find that you're really enjoying this field, I would definitely recommend maybe spending the money on Substance Designer and Substance Painter. Those are both great softwares for making materials and textures, but for this project, don't worry about that. So once you've gotten this far, you're almost done. It's just a matter of lighting, composing your scene, rendering, and if you want, compositing. It sounds like a lot, but in my opinion, these aspects tend to feel a lot more fluid and smoother once you get to them. Because once you're this far into the project, it's a lot less scary because you can see the end. And once you've done this, that's it. Congratulations, you finished your first project. Render it, share it, save it, and back it up on like I did. Another good thing to do is to get feedback. Some people may be overly critical and really harsh, but feedback allows you to understand what can make a project better and what you can do to actually improve upon it, and is definitely valuable to the learning process in my opinion. Getting through a project like this is so valuable because it will show you that you're capable of doing so. It will make you feel so much more comfortable with the tools and will make learning less of a scary challenge and much more of an exciting adventure. I remember after finishing that first project I made, I started looking at random buttons I didn't use in Blender and saying, hmm, what does this do? And would Google it and say, wow, that would have made my life so much easier. I wish I knew about it before. But that's the essence of this field. You're always learning, but the journey is what makes it fun. Some things I would watch out for and further words of advice. When you're feeling yourself get discouraged, that is when you should push the absolute hardest and not give up. Sometimes you'll come to a problem that you feel like you'll never solve, and you won't if you give up. These moments can be stressful, but when you finally find the solution, it's the best feeling ever. Also, take breaks. Don't try to bang out the whole project in one sitting. Get up, stretch, go outside, get a good night's sleep, and ponder upon the steps that will still have to be taken to complete the project. When you take breaks, it allows time for the previously learned knowledge to sink in. Now, the biggest thing is that I would watch out for is don't try to be a master at the very beginning. Don't think, I want to learn every single thing about Blender piece by piece before I start. I feel like even I had this mindset that, okay, Blender's a really complex software and making animations is going to take a lot of time even if I know what I'm doing. So if I get a book and I learn every corner of the software before I start my project, then I'll be able to make my project without any problems and it'll be a lot quicker. It sounds great, but that's never going to happen. Like I said, you're always going to be learning in this field, and the best way to acquire that knowledge is to actually do it. That's really the point of this video, is figuring things out on your own. That's how that knowledge tends to stick. You're only going to have to Google how to loop cut so many times before you start doing it secondhand. And that goes for pretty much everything else in Blender. So don't try to be a master at the very beginning. It's just not likely to happen and it's going to waste you more time than it's going to save you. Now finally, it may sound cliche, but try to have fun. Be excited for the end of the project, but don't dwell on it. Just have fun as you come up with new and clever ways to solve your problems. If you're not having fun in this field, then why are you doing it? Like I said, there will be frustrating times, but just remember that getting through them is worth it. I wish you all the best of luck and the best of results on your first project. 
Feel free to link your projects and let me know if you want me to give you critiques on them. I will do my best to leave constructive feedback if you'd like me to. Also, if you're having problems, bring that up in the comments too. For anyone watching who may have a solution, help others out, as I will. The Blender community is typically great and the whole journey doesn't have to be done alone. So to summarize, set a goal, more specifically, a smart goal. Set out to start making it. Search problems as you come across them. And keep pushing. That's all for this video. If you like this video, consider slapping a like on it. And to see future tutorials from me, maybe consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, and again, best of luck.